Hey traders, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Ashford Hospitality Trust, ticker symbol AHT, and we're gonna start off by doing a little bit of due diligence, specifically looking at finances and this recent Keystone filing that came out yesterday that seems to be causing some confusion and maybe even some panic uh, among retail investors. So we're gonna break that down and get to the bottom of it. Then we're gonna take a look at institutional ownership because I believe there's some very bullish indication coming from those recent 13F filings. And finally, as always, we're going to break down the charts, taking a look at key levels and indicators so we know what to expect moving forward. Without any further ado, let's hop right into the video. Okay, so before we begin, I encourage everybody to quickly just hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. It helps me out tremendously. And I'll put this out there to you guys that if we do reach 100 subscribers by this Sunday, I will be doing an all day stream on Monday where you guys can hop in, ask questions. We're going to break down charts all day and we'll even do some day trading. I'll show you guys my process to find, you know, the next 10 to 20 to 30 percent runner and we'll maximize some gains for that day. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to subscribe. And aside from that, let's hop right into the analysis. Okay, so here we have the purchase agreement between AHT and Keystone Capital Partners. And essentially, this is a pretty run-of-the-mill debt-to-equity offering. There's really nothing too fancy here. Um, I mean, we can take a look at the conditions. You see here that AHT may sell to Keystone up to about 30 million shares of common stock. But do keep in mind right here at the very bottom, it does say Keystone has no right to require the company to sell any common stock. Um, but they are obligated to make purchases if AHT directs them to. So that's good news for AHT investors for a couple of reasons, okay? Because first of all, it shows AHT is in complete control of the situation here. They're only going to be selling stock to Keystone if that betters their overall financial picture. And that's something that every single investor should appreciate. And second of all, from Keystone side, it shows that they can't artificially bring this price down, hoping to buy cheap shares and then ride them back up. No, but by signing this binding agreement, they're actually showing just how bullish they are on this stock. Okay, they believe that they would rather have equity of this company. They would rather have the stock because it's going to give them a higher payout in the long run than what they would get from the interest on the debt that they loaned out to AHT. So that is actually a very bullish side on both sides. AHT can now kind of sell off some shares in order to reduce their debt and better their overall financial picture. Meanwhile, Keystone is just showing once again that they're bullish and that they would rather have stock than debt repayment. Okay, so the last thing we're going to take a look at to fully wrap up conversations on this filing and understand AHT's financial picture as a whole is take a look at their quarter one 2021 earnings report. And that's where you're going to see kind of where my theory is on why AHT agreed to this filing with Keystone. So as you can see in their earnings report released on the AHT website, uh, they talk about how on January 15th, they agreed to strategic financing and essentially accepted a loan where so far they have drawn about $200 million on the loan and they still have the ability to draw an additional $250 million if needed. However, at this time, the company believes it may not need to draw down any additional proceeds. And listening to that uh, company earnings call will just kind of confirm this listening to the insiders, the CEO talk, they have enough cash to stay afloat as long as this pandemic kind of continues to hinder travel. They think that the reopening is coming soon and very soon things are going to get back to normal. They won't need any additional cash to stay afloat. And so my theory then on why this filing happened with Keystone is it's kind of a hedge for AHT because let's say that something does go wrong. There's a new strain of COVID and all of a sudden hotels have to shut down for an additional six months. Well, in that case, they're probably going to go back to this 250 million in debt that they haven't drawn. And they're going to take some loans so that they can stay afloat. And by doing so, it's going to make their balance sheet look pretty bad. You know, they said they were done taking in additional debt 
but here they are, you know, adding debt to their, uh, to their portfolio, to their balance sheet. And one way that they can substantially reduce how bad this looks is by converting some of this already existing debt that they need to repay into equity. And, you know, Keystone is more than happy to make that happen and, you know, take their debt and turn it into shares of the company. So I think, you know, like I said, very run of the mill. I think that this is a smart move by AHT. And honestly, it's pretty bullish on both sides, no matter how you look at it. Okay, but now let's shift our focus to something completely different, something that's going to be of major interest to anybody long on this stock. It looks extremely bullish, and I'm talking about institutional ownership. So shout out to Ahmad the Investor. Great follow on Twitter um, if you're interested in stocks and specifically AHT. You know, he has a lot of good insight there. But, you know, he pointed out yesterday all the different 13 Fs being filed by different institutions trying to buy into AHT at these cheap prices, specifically pointing out some of the biggest institutions in the financial world, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, RBC, Bank of America, all buying different amounts of shares. I mean, Morgan Stanley is just absolutely loading up in shares. But, you know, I mean, taking a look at Fintel just kind of confirms this story you can see so many different 13 apps being filed over the last uh, few days, really. And companies are really just trying to load up on this stock right now. These companies know what they're doing, okay? They're, they're not in the business of losing money. They have experience. They have all the technology and insight they need to uh, kind of execute successful trades. And so if they're all buying in right now, that should tell you exactly where this stock is headed no need to fret. That's a very bullish sign. But now it's time for everybody's favorite part of the video. It's time to do a little bit of a chart breakdown, uh, starting off just by looking at the daily price action. So we did have this gap down this morning. Um, I mean, the entire market was just falling apart over the Bitcoin frenziness. And so, I mean, honestly, this was a very, very good dip by opportunity, especially if you were trading a pre-market, you know, it went all the way down to like 285. So I know a few people snagged it down there. And if you are bullish on the stock, then that's exactly what you want to be doing, you know, buying at those levels. But, you know, once we did open up and gap down, things actually looked pretty good. Okay. I mean, we were in a little bear flag here, which normally breaks to the downside, but AHT actually broke upwards of it. And it looked right about here in the mid morning, like it could start actually going and flying all the way back up, but that didn't happen. Instead, it was just kind of a low volume consolidation day. You know, you can see down here that there really wasn't much volume until kind of the final part of the day. And as a result, you know, we were just in this channel all day between $3 and $3 and 10 cents. And we just kind of stuck there. Um, nothing really good, nothing really bad. It was a pretty boring day, but you know, this low volume consolidation sometimes is just what you need before making that next leg up. So that's not bad whatsoever. Taking a look at the indicators, you can see right here that we did close right at VWAP. The VWAP is the volume weighted average price. And it's this yellow line right here. So closing right at VWAP is neither bullish nor bearish. It shows that really tomorrow, anything could happen. Um, but now just kind of taking a deeper look at some other indicators that we like to use. I mean, these are the main two right here. Okay. So this light blue line is the 50 day SMA and this orange line is the 200 day SMA. And those are the main long-term moving averages that most traders like to use to evaluate whether we're in bullish or bearish territory right now, AHT is well above them. That means we're in bullish territory in the long term. but um, more importantly, you know, these are going to be our main levels of support moving forward. And it should be, if it does dip down to these levels, it should be where you're buying or trying to buy as close to if you are interested in going long in the stock. I have this little check mark right here just to remind myself that if we ever do see those levels, that's exactly where we're going to want to buy in. But now taking a look at support and resistance levels. So the first support level right here holding up pretty beautifully throughout the day is right at this $3 level. $3 is a whole psychological number. It's always going to kind of serve as uh, resistance or support. And today it served as support and it held up pretty nicely. And we're going to want that to continue to hold tomorrow and through the rest of the week if we want to start making that next leg upward. After that, we still have historical support at 290 and 282. 
If we fall below that, then yeah, our main support line is going to be right here between this 273 range and 275 range for those big SMAs. If AHT cannot hold these ranges, things do start to look very, very bearish for the stock. Um, I personally would be cutting my positions right here. But also, like I mentioned earlier, it's also a great place to add to your position. If you're adding right above it or right at these levels, you should always be trying to add at support levels to minimize your risk and maximize your upside. Okay, but now let's take a look at resistance levels. Let's say tomorrow we do start making our next leg up. So what can we expect? Well, first and foremost, we have this 320 level, okay? 320 and 340 are just gonna continue to be pesky levels for AHT to get above. But if that does happen, that's where we can really start flying. Once again, just reviewing what we established a few days ago, we have other resistance based off historical data on uh, 375 and 420. And if we can get above 420 cleanly, then we do have room to run all the way to my first price target of $5. So um, that's what we have on the resistance side. Uh, keep those in mind. And then, yeah, I mean, the main thing there is if we do get above 340, get prepared because this stock is going to start moving very, very fast. The last thing we're going to take a look at as far as charts and technicals go is just the volume. And what we see right here just kind of confirms what I said earlier. It was a low volume consolidation day, only 22 million in volume. Uh, nowhere close to what we had on Monday when we really started to make a push up. And this is what we want to see when it is time to start making the next leg up. Okay. 34 million is a good sign. It would be even better if we could get back to this range. Okay. We had some 50 million days and some hundred million, 100 million day. If we can get to these levels, then I have no doubt in my mind that AHT will get above 340 and we're going to start gapping up. So let me know whether you agree with my analysis, whether you disagree, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? Are we going to get that next leg up or are we going to consolidate a little bit more? If you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. Aside from that, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and have a great rest of your night.